We have 55 of them, but are India's billionaires slow in sharing their riches? On one hand, there's a paradigm shift in corporate philanthropy with the likes of Azim Premji and PNC Menon giving away significant chunks of their personal fortunes, something that's been unprecedented here in India. On the other hand, survey after survey suggests we lag far behind in the giving index as compared to our Western counterparts. On We Mean Business tonight, we debate whether India Inc. lacks the culture of giving, whether forcing philanthropy on in corporate India is really fair when the rest of us have a choice, and whether there's a business case for CSR or what many call conscious capitalism. Joining us tonight on the panel, Mr. Didi Rati, Group Executive President of the Tabula Group, TV Mohandas Pai, Chairman of Manipal Global, joins in from Bangalore. Matthew Cherian, CEO of HelpAge India, joins in from New Delhi. So does Dilip Cherian, Consulting Partner at Perfect Relations. And Shoma Chaudhary, Managing Editor of Tehelka Magazine, also joins in from the capital. I want to begin with you, uh, Mr. Pai. You know, your first thoughts and uh, sort of very unprecedented trend that's emerged in the past uh, few months of corporates like Azim Premji uh, giving away a substantial part of their personal fortune. Well, I think uh, our rich, that is the billionaires of India, have let the people of this country down. I hold a strong opinion because they have become rich not only because of their entrepreneurship, but also because the government of India reduced tax from around 45% to 30%, abolished wealth tax, and abolished estate duty. So the abolition of all these taxes and liberalization gave them an opportunity. We could as well have these taxes. And the expectation was that they will create wealth and use part of the wealth responsibly like all other parts of the world. Now, because of their uh, unnecessary accumulation of wealth and use of the wealth for certain reasons, certain purposes, which I don't think all of us agree with, they have let the people of this country down, leading to a clamor for the CSR law and other laws which may come in and quite possibly could have reimposed the estate duty again, which I am beginning to incline to support. So I think our billionaires need to show more compassion. The people with money need to show more compassion. Much of them are given to conspicuous expenditure, vulgar exposition of wealth, and I think is hurting sentiments in this country. And all right-feeling citizens are feeling that they are let down by, this, by, by, by many of them. And it's time that uh, citizens uh, send a clear message that, look, Please practice compassionate capitalism. Please make sure you act as trustees of wealth of society. Enjoy your wealth. No confiscated expenditure in a poor country. And please do good for the greater good for society. I think, you know, that's the expectation we should have. And I think they're not doing enough. Right. So, so what you're essentially saying is that despite being given the stops by the government, uh, many others haven't really expressed the same level of generosity that uh, somebody like an Azim Premji uh, or Mr. Menon has. And that's uh, bothering you. No, I'm not bothered about uh, whether uh, Prem, they reach Premji's level and Menon's level because both Premji and Menon are extraordinary people. I know them personally and I hold them in high regard. But they're not even reach a, a, a little bit of their level. I mean, you know, they're not even committed 5%, 10% of the wealth, nor do they give a substantial part of the income they earn. What we see in corporate India is many of these billionaires and many of them people who come to work take a very high compensation. Because they, they use their controlling interest ability in the corporation to give themselves a very high salary too. And the salary of the next person in the company is so low compared to what they have, quite clearly demonstrating that uh, they want to accumulate wealth and they want to make sure that they do much better and forget about the rest. So I'm not comparing Premji and PNC Menon. I'm asking them, please open a person, demonstrate a commitment to doing uh, good for the greater good. And all of them say we're creating jobs, we're investing back. Now, you know, everybody creates jobs. So I think Premji right. also creates jobs. So right. I think we should hold them to a higher sense of responsibility. Right. May, uh, Mr. Rati, do you agree with this scathing, uh, you know, sort of criticism by Mohandas Pai that India Inc. Uh, in particular lacks the culture of giving? I don't think I fully agree with him. You know, he's bracketing everybody. Right. And uh, I also don't agree with him that if you do it through your corporate route, that cannot be counted as giving by the, uh, the promoter. You know, he's the, the isolated case which you are trying to compare is a case where there is a lot of liquidity in the hands of the person. Secondly, there is huge sale holding in the hands of that person. So yes, but uh, I mean, uh, no way I'm undermining the importance of what has been, it's a great move. Both are very respectable persons. Their move is laudable. Their move is to be copied by others. No question about that. But to take a general view that nobody does anything excepting these people would be going too far. Right. I also do not agree 
that reduction in taxes has brought in, you know, the lot of wealth creation. So let's be there are enough example of cases where IT companies pay zero taxes. Right. Whereas manufacturing companies have paid huge taxes. No, which is what he's saying, uh, that, you know, despite the soft speed uh, given by the government, we haven't seen too many people come out. Uh, but, you know, uh, Shoma, uh, the point that Mr. Rati makes uh, is valid in some sense that uh, people who have made money post-liberalization, uh, the new money that's come in, the nouveau riche, are in some sense more comfortable giving away as compared to the second and third generation, the old sort of manufacturing businesses, uh, because, you know, They've come through a lot of insecurity uh, in the license raj, and that's probably why that culture still hasn't evolved. I, I, do, I don't think that's uh, strictly true because, uh, you know, if you really look back to, you know, pre-liberalization, there were barely a handful, you know, maybe five or six or ten really big business families in this country. And, uh, in fact, if at all there's any sort of cultural infrastructure, big institutions, uh, you know, you would still go back to Birla's and Tata's and look at things that they set up. Um, so the new generation, you know, I, I, do, I don't think that they're really giving away their wealth yet to a certain ex un, uh, extent that's understandable because of a kind of historic evolution. You know, the whole idea of pleasure and desire and consumerism is only 15 years old uh, in this country. And so there is still a kind of graspingness of, of you know, let's enjoy the spoils for the, uh, you know, before any kind of conscience comes in. Uh, having said that, of course, I'm of the ranks that feel that the, re the rich have and privileged have a huge duty to this country because now, you know, I think 55 is a very small number. It's a shock we all got when we realized only 40,000 people are, you know, are, uh, you know, are, are deemed as uh, legitimate taxpayers in this country. We know how much of hidden wealth there is, you know. And when we talk of giving away or compassionate capitalism, I think what is most appalling is that those who even do give away would happily give away 10 crores and 15 crores and donate little, you know, gold to a temple rather than setting up anything, any new institutions, whether it's to do with art or culture, look at even spaces, you know. I mean, there is just no support for anything that is, that is, as, that is visionary. Even if, you know, look at any new institutions in this country, um, no uh, sort of areas of excellence that have been set up um, you know, by, by sort of corporate largesse. So I think that quite apart from just giving away for conscience, there is a, there is a kind of vision that is missing. Right. Because corporates, of course, are the builders of India as well. And they, they, they are in many ways the citizens that we look to uh, who are enabled to do th that beyond what government does. Right. So I think that Dilip consciousness Cherian, definitely that? needs to come in. You, you know, know both, let, let's just take that to Dilip uh, Mr. Cherian, would you agree with that? There's a lot just of uh, corporate point, largesse. Nikhil. Yeah. Just, yeah. We had a lot of corporates giving money to Harvard and to their alumni abroad. You know, we need that kind of chairs to be set up here in India. Why would you want to have that prestige abroad and not actually suck back intellect and, and high excellence, educational excellence back to this country? But we hardly set up chairs in India, you know. So I think there's a kind of uh, slavishness in the way we set up chairs abroad and not here.